myself in the blanket of your memory I wear it around like a coat from the cold I dream of happiness and all the stories For just a minute there we were coming up so close So close To know justice to the memory. Thank you for tuning in. This is Matt Santos, and you're listening to episode 184 of the Mile High Show. Available wherever you get podcasts: Stitcher, iTunes, Google Podcasts, uh, TuneIn Radio, and also now on Spotify. You can also uh, check out all our archived episodes at MileHighShow.com. Give us a rating and a review on iTunes, or use that. Uh, Support the show link at uh, at milehighshow.com where you can uh, link into all of our platforms and uh, and leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to plat- uh, wherever you listen to podcasts from or just send us a send us a message through the contact us because we want to hear from you. I want to hear what type of guests you would like to hear from, maybe some interesting recording spots. We do record primarily on location. So if you've got an interesting location, bar, restaurant, uh, coffee shop, or or anything of that nature, uh, let us know where, where you think would be fun to uh, to set up shop and, uh, and, and record from. Guest suggestions, all that good stuff. Also right there. At MileHighShow.com is a link to our Amazon uh, affiliate. You click on there, it takes you right to your Amazon or Amazon Prime login. Doesn't cost you anything extra, uh, but uh, lets Amazon know you got to, uh, got to them through us, and they give us a little thank you at the end of the month. So please, if you do some online shopping, I encourage you to use that Amazon link at MileHighShow.com so that you can uh, show your support not just to us, uh, at the Mile High Show, but also to the artists, uh, musicians, and entertainers, and uh, just interesting folks that we that we highlight. Because by supporting us, you're supporting them. You're getting the word out. Like today's guest, Mr. Garrick Rawlings. He is a Prescott-based musician, but with uh, roots all over the country, originally from Michigan and He's lived uh, all over the place, spent a lot of time in the uh, Southern California area. Uh, go back at milehighshow.com and pull up some of the past episodes. He's been on, oh, a couple of times in the past uh, to hear his story. Most of what we talked about today was uh, was his upcoming show at the Raven, uh, Raven Cafe in uh, in. Prescott here let me pull up his his page at Garrick Rawlings dot com uh, oh in just a couple of days depending on when you're listening to this Sunday August 12th he will be with the good folks at Folk Sessions Mr. Uh, Tom Agostino Folk Sessions dot com is where you can find out about Tom and his program at the Folk Sessions from uh, Prescott Public Radio uh Garrick will be playing Woody in the Woods Fest, a Woody Guthrie uh festival with uh Dave Bauman, Barbara Heber, Brad Newman, the Robertson Sisters, the Columbia River Ramblers, Garrick Rawlings, and Tom and Chris Agostino. That is going to be August twelfth in Prescott at the Highland Center. Highlandcenter.org is where you can find out information about that. We are talking a, a little bit about that, as well as his show, Garrick's show, August 23rd, 7 p.m. at the Raven Cafe in Prescott. And that is where we recorded this episode as well. So jump on GarrickRawlings.com. There's a link right there in the show notes to find out about his upcoming shows. Uh, you can also find links to his uh, Spotify and uh, online music and all kinds of good stuff. You can figure out a way there to get a copy of his new CD, uh, self-titled Garrick Rawlings. Uh, you can get a download right there. You can preview some of the music on there. It's a great little spot and a great great CD. Uh, the intro music, as a matter of fact, was I Want to Run Away, the the number one track on that new self-titled CD. And I think on the outro, 
I think I'm going to go Lost in Time. I really enjoyed that song as well. The whole CD, though, is very, very good. So congratulations to Garrick for getting that out. He's been working on it for a long time. You'll hear about that. We talk about his journey to get this uh get this cd out it's been i think he said like a 15 year venture to get this get this put together and uh and get it out there uh he lists who he's he had on the cd and the contributors and and the backup musicians and all that so i hope you enjoy the show again garrick rawlings from the raven cafe where he will be playing on do, 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 what did I, I just said it and my brain doesn't work august 23rd a thursday night in downtown Preston. Prescott, Arizona, August 23rd in Prescott, Arizona, 7 p.m. at the Raven Cafe. You can find out about the Raven at ravencafe.com. They also got a pretty active Facebook page. Um, and today's show is brought to you by Big Daddy E's Barbecue in Chino Valley. BDEBBQ.com is where you can find out uh, the menu and their hours and all that good stuff. And, oh, Garrick will be there on Friday, August 31st at 5 p.m. on the Tiny Mighty Stage at Big Daddy E's. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up. Um, uh, let's see. I, it's, it's traded some messages today with a uh, comic out of Phoenix that I don't know. We're hooked up on Facebook, but I, d- I don't believe I've ever met Vince Dalkey. He, uh, like I said, is a, F- is a Phoenix-based comic. will be starting as of next week. Yeah, August 17th, and then the next couple of Fridays, the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st. Uh, he will be running a comedy show in Prescott, a booked comedy show in the evening, and then starting at about 6 o'clock, an hour or so before the uh, the regular scheduled comedy show with some Phoenix comics. He will be hosting an op- comic open mic at Mark's Beer Garden. Now, we recorded there a few weeks back, several weeks ago, with uh, Front Page Blues Band. Uh, check out Mark's Beer Garden on Facebook. Just in the search box there, Mark's Beer Garden. Uh, And on, again, let me tell you, August 17th, 24th, and 31st, Vince Dalkey out of Phoenix will be hosting an open mic comedy night at Mark's Beer Garden. So uh, go by, check it out. I might, uh, uh, I'm going to try and hook up with Vince and do uh, do a podcast for uh, to promote that show, uh, hopefully it'll get up and running. There's a couple of new venues up here that are starting comedy, uh, but none of them are running open mics. So I was really glad to see that. Uh, in addition to our very big and thriving and vital music open mic, he is planning a comedy open mic as well. So uh, you know what? Show on up. You never know. Uh, you never know who might take the mic at Mark's Beer Garden. But in the meantime, sit back and enjoy my conversation from the Raven Cafe with local musician Garrick Rawlings and pick up a copy of his self-titled CD at GarrickRawlings.com. Go out and check him out. On August 31st, Big Daddy E's Barbecue in Chino Valley, and on the 23rd at, uh, at the Raven Cafe. It's kind of a album release party, a CD release party. So go on, check out Garrick, and, uh, and enjoy the show. Thanks for tuning in. I was grabbing my guitar on the way out, thinking I was going to it because I'm. Oh, I'm you could have brought it. We'd have played. You could have played so something. Like <laughs> Wait a minute. So what? G- give me a little. We we're just talking off mic, right? Right. Uh, about. Uh, I'll cop to it right now. I missed a gig this morning because I. Because uh, I forgot. I'm old and <laughs> decrepit, and I got a broken brain. But we were mentioning how, for me anyway, years ago. I would have just went ballistic at the smallest thing, and I just I get frustrated and get angry and get full of angst and everything. Yeah, yeah. I know why I'm not doing it anymore. What you mentioned, you're kind of the same way. You're able to let go of stuff. What What do you attribute that to? Just getting older and getting o- that's, perspective, yeah, or what? Getting older and and knowing how much of a waste. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it'll just burn. Man, I'll never. There's that one film. I can't. It was. Uh, De Niro was in it, 
There were a bunch of. It would help if I could remember the title. <laughs> I think Brad Pitt was in it. They were like real hardcore. Pro. Oh, Pacino! Pacino was the cop. De Niro was the robber. He and was the, it. He, uh, yes. Yeah, Val, Val Kilmer. Yes. Yeah. Where he, it was that big assault rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got bank their, robbery. Yeah, they kind of based it on that Armenian robbery in yeah. the Bank of America in the Valley out there in L.A. Uh, but De Niro finally had their big score, had it made. But the one guy that screwed him over. The cops were hold, holding in the hotel by yeah, LAX, yeah, yeah. but he's got his he's got a big enough cash to live the rest of his life. He met that cool girl. She's yeah. waiting for him. all he's got to do is leave town, <laughs> but he can't let it go. Well, that, the, the that whole mang, mangro yeah. or whatever that car- he can't he has to go in there and kill that guy and he ruins it. It's just like why could you know down to the smallest thing you're yeah, like I yeah. get when you're obsessed with it though and you. I could tell anybody else how to handle yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. For yourself, you you're like, dude, go. it's not going to affect yeah. your life, not one bit. I, for the rest of your life, yeah. let it go, man. It's not easy. And his but. whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing that he was saying through that film was, you never have anything that you can't leave behind. And then he got wrapped up with yeah, that yeah. girl, and, and Kilmer's character had the wife and all that mess. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting out of really late. Why did I say? You, how many times you wish you wish you could be the Clint Eastwood and just not say a word and walk away, <laughs> and that has much more effect than sitting there. You son of a! <laughs> I think you and I are both in the same boat. That we're never we're not the type of people that can't not say something. <laughs> Anybody yeah. who's listened to this show knows I can't yeah. keep my mouth shut for it's nothing. Like, <laughs> It's like write that letter, but don't send it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's. I, 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 send I, I, I know a buddy of mine. I know. I, I I get these rants from him middle of the night. He knows. He knows that I'm up at three, four in the morning. Sometimes we're on the, kind of the same sleep yeah, yeah, schedule. Yeah. And every once in a while, I tell him. He sends me a text or an email. I says, you know what? We got we got to figure out a way to hook a breathalyzer up to your phone or your laptop because <laughs> no problem in writing those getting fired up and writing yeah, that email it's stuff. healthy but to, you gotta have something to stop yeah. that send button that's yeah. what hurts that's what's gonna get, end up I killing like to, you I like to uh, compose an email you know, like I'm composing an email but don't put any address or anything on it so I don't even <laughs> accidentally send it <laughs> so I've got the you I've just got the text there send and all and you're like Mother, he ought to, he, they ought to hear this they ought to hear now go feel the same way tomorrow then send it <laughs> usually you don't yeah. feel the same way tomorrow <laughs> a lot of times when I do that I look at it the next day and go I have no idea what I was saying yeah. I don't I, what was I what was but, I get what yeah. point was I getting to I I, I do that uh for work, you know, like when I'm doing an interview or something, yeah. I've gotten in the habit of using not this big recorder, but I got a little micro recorder. Uh-huh. The main reason is because I can't read my own handwriting. But I've gotten to the point, I, I like to keep old school. I got little notepads, sure. just reporter notepads and pens and pencils scattered around the house. Because I'll think of something, either for a bid or a joke or a short yeah, story yeah. or something, and I'll write it down, and it's gold. And then later I look at it, I go... Yeah. I, what, what was I getting at? What, I, it's yeah. like one word. You know, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Foot. It's what was I? Yeah. Why was this so important? It's at exactly the same as, as writing songs. Like yeah. Half the time I can't read. Half the time I can't read what I wrote. Or what? Or you're, what is you're your, off in the. Oh, that's great! And you're like, <laughs> where, you might have been on to something, but it didn't show up on the paper. <laughs> or you might have been on something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now I was listening to your CD on the way over here in the truck. Oh, nice. I. I was blown away. It's incredible. Oh, jeez! And Thanks, the man. these I'm a big I'm a big fan of of stories. I love storytellers. That's why even even if they sound good, a lot of the a lot of pop songs. I mean, and I don't mean now pop. I mean even growing oh, up. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of of pop songs really. I mean, it, yeah, a lot of them are stuck in your head, and you know, you sing along to them or whatever. But I love storytellers at. Nine ten years old, I was listening to one of the neighbors turned me on to Tom Waits, and there you go. I would sit there and just I, I I'd make up this the days before MTV. I would make up these little films in my head of what the songs. Man, then later I'd find out it, it was nothing like what I was imagining. Yeah, who cares? But it didn't matter. Yeah, it was yeah. what. I, 
What's your process for writing? Now, this was about 80, 90 percent originals. There was a couple of covers on it. Uh, yeah, they're all, it's an 11 song album, and uh, there's two covers on it, but I wrote all the rest of them. Uh, Poncho and Lefty, Town Poncho and Lefty. And, and what was the other one? Uh, Friend of the Devil, The Friend Grateful of the Devil, Dead. Which, we, uh, is that a dead song? I could, yeah, yeah. I could, it didn't click as to as to yeah. where it was from. It's, yeah, it's it Grateful from, Dead. Okay, uh, nice. Jerry Garcia and uh, uh, Robert Hunter, I believe. And uh, John Dawson from uh, from uh, New Riders of the Purple Sage nice, nice. wrote that song. Towns, what a storyteller he was! Oh yeah, yeah. he was. Well, that you, you talk about stories. That same thing. I was. We talked about this before, or I have. It, where I I came up a hard rock guitar player, yeah. electric guitar player, and you kept the hair. And <laughs> it's a wig, man. It's a wig. Between the two of us, we have gonna... two normal guys. <laughs> length of hair, but uh, by the way, it's, what a change to see each other in the light of day. This yeah. is, I think this is the third. We're usually in some dark, dank, Hand over dank coffee corner. Yeah, of coffee. Yeah, yeah. I think last time I mean, you and I sat and talked. Yeah, we were in the. We back. were down the hallway there by the bathrooms. Hang, yeah. Two guys hanging out with a camera next to the bathrooms and, exactly. a, and a recorder. Yeah, no, that didn't look like, fishy did, at all. What, yeah. Did, <laughs> What were the metrics on that, as they or the optics on that, or whatever they say these I days? I think Les was with us that night. Les Lyman? Oh, Les Lyman. Leslie, not a serial killer Lyman. Is he yeah, still he, around? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, well, I, what I, this I was, saw Les a couple weeks ago. This was told to me about a local politician. I needed to reach out to one of our county supervisors, but it fits for Les, too. It's like, oh, I need to call so-and-so. I need to get a hold of Les. Just go on the corner, set up a mic. He'll show up. It, it'll, only be a few, it'll only be a matter of time. So, so he should be here any minute now. Yeah, well, I fully expected to see him <laughs> before you. But yeah, so I got even in the, but you know, I like the, the Beatles and, the, you know, you Dylan, even in the classic yeah. rock area, there were the storytellers within that. But then uh, I found a whole another world of storytellers once yeah. I got into Towns Van Zant, which yeah. gets you to Guy Clark and to Steve Earle and to Dave Alvin and Tom Russell and all these guys. So they, that I'm going to have to go jot some of these names down <laughs> because I didn't recognize some of those, but I'm always interested. I'll send you an email. Yeah. In, uh, in, the, in the people Prine that inspire the people that inspire me kind of thing. You yeah. Know? It just Keep that train going. And that's where, it, uh, you know, ever since I've been primarily solo acoustic, it's it's the songs that drives me. Like, yeah, I'm up for a good jam and everything, but I yeah, I kind of been through all that, and yeah. and, and 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 I'm always impressed by great uh, uh, virtuos virtuosos on instruments and yeah. whatnot. But uh, I'm a song guy, man. Yeah. I love same as you. I love the stories. Yeah. I love shit. I remember the. And some of them were were hacky and poppy, but yeah. back when I was a kid, I put on the big old headphones on the on the hi fi and the playing LPs, and I'd make up what I thought these were. I'd be really enthralled, and then I'd read an article or see a guy on you know like you know Tonight Show or Midnight Special or something like that, and they're talking about the story that they were telling. I'm like, no, no, that's not it. Yeah, yeah. I, mine was way right. better. Well, I remember, <laughs> that was the big fuss when when MTV was taken over. Yeah, the old, they were like, "It's ruining the music. It's going to ruin the whole yeah. music." Little did they know what was to come with the internet. But yeah. uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Lots the, of stuff remember the good the old music. days with MTV. Yeah. But the older <laughs> artists, they, they compl- well that, now now there's going to they're going to whoever's listening to the song is attaching whatever video yeah. we made yeah. instead of so coming up with your own, or coming up with your own director of photography yeah. making their own story up kind of thing. Yeah. Like remember the song "Seasons in the Sun." Yeah, but Terry Jacks down, 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 down. I mean, I don't know what the hell that story seems like a yeah. suicide. But there's, you know, that there's so many fluffy, poppy AM hits. But they're like, what was that? Yeah. I, that song just. Fr- I still have the single, man. Yeah. What the? I hey, mean, Margo. those are some stories, man. Talk about the local characters in, in our town. <laughs> yeah. One of them just walked well, yeah. in. Mark yep. O'Donnelly, great artist, great guitar yeah, player, man. and just a quirky little dude, man. <laughs> and his dad that he barely knew, I guess, worked at the Kingston Mines. He was a blues player in oh, yeah? Chicago, a place I, I hung out at I when I lived in Chicago. I need to sit down with Mark Yeah, he's days. got some good stories, man. Yeah. Spent time in a Greek Orthodox monastery. Really? Yeah. I'll have to do that one. We've uh, talked about it every once in a while. I'll bump into him. But uh, then he was out of town. Anyway, we'll get off on Marco another time. But, but yeah, the... the uh, what was I going to say? Now, it, it, Marco walked by and I got distracted by happens. his beautiful hat and hair. <laughs> <laughs> Want me to get... I can get his number for no. you. 
<laughs> when you're going through and uh, and putting together the album, you worked. This was something you were working on for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, right? we worked our asses off. When on did you that. start? When did you start the project? Or is there a way to put a time on it? Are these songs been rattling yeah, around well, in your two brain? Things. Well, back, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, 15 years ago when I was still in L.A., I did. this is really my first official professionally done album. Yeah. I did one other album, but I recorded it on the four-track cassette yeah. in my garage. It was supposed to be a demo, but more songs started coming to me, so I just turned it into an album with the entire purpose of doing what I just did yeah. now. Of because I had like well, what is it? I was listening to it. Self titled Garrick Rollins, correct? That, okay, yep. and uh, where Actually, can we folks did get it. Uh, it's uh, come and see me anytime. Uh, I'm I uh, I'm on all those things now. That was my latest challenge. I'm on Bandcamp and okay, uh, gotcha. Spotify I'll, I'll and, there, and iTunes, iTunes. One and, of the uh, best ways, all like those you said, things. Find out where you're playing, right? Right? And right? Come on by and grab yourself a copy. Yeah, this is what I learned about stream. I I, I don't even listen to music. <laughs> uh, on the internet, like on all those yeah. things, I listen to albums and CDs and the radio. And so, once I got the album, once it was manufactured, I uh, I had to get it. I thought, oh, maybe a week to get yeah. just get it going, you know, via CD Baby, and then that yeah. does some of it for you. And then there's other places you gotta go, SoundCloud, and all these things, and. And uh, oh, you're dealing with corporate millennials that take probably with any. It's like 15 questions, 15 yeah. emails to get something they could have just told me the first time. Because <laughs> it's all all new to me. I don't know why I, I digressed from that. But oh, what I learned when they the stream, not the downloads. You'd get a little bit of money for a download. Yeah. But the streaming, you get this is the high end. They're all this or lower. Point zero 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 seven cents. <laughs> So a, a, so, you, a, so a if I get plays. if I get fifteen thousand streams, I get a buck fifty. Nice, man. But, and it's I mean that's how bad it, <laughs> it and and uh, it's starting to slow. But just uh, just a handful of years ago, it was a lot less than that. Really? And uh, I just saw a thing where Peter Frampton and other music, some of the heavyweights are lobbying Congress and stuff. This it's 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 screwed. The musicians yeah, are. Yeah. Like I, I see this thing where Spotify they've they have a millions of income but they're still in the red they haven't yeah. broke even yet but th- like them and everybody else they don't sell anything yeah there's just a service they're they're a, they're a portal yeah. to get something they don't yeah. make they don't create anything yeah. other than the service which is something I guess and now there's two generations of kids that never had bought anything. They, yeah, they don't know what a record store is yeah, unless they're going, you know, uh, for the kitsch value of having a those really big CDs. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. really big black CDs. Well, that's what I want to talk about that too. Uh 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 Fr- Peter Frampton. Yeah. Was one of the guys that when he was, I sold, I'm making up the numbers, but more or less it was like I sold 40 I had 44 million Streams of Show Me the Way or one of his yeah. big seventies hits, and I got a check for seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> and one of the politicians, you know, businessmen, politicians, it's, it finally clicked, and they, well, that's outrageous. Yeah, I mean, that's how. What and what happened was, I'm no expert on it, but I've been learning because of going through the process. When the record, you know, like Blockbuster blew it with the internet. Yeah, the record companies blew it before that. Uh, with the internet and Napster and all the, everything, when it went up there yeah. for free, they handled it all wrong. And, and in order to get their chunk of change from these guys, they made deals with the, with these companies. Yeah. Outside of the artists, so the yeah. artists just have got nothing. And you know from what? It. You'd think after how many decades it would have changed, but go back through you know the blues guys in the 30s and 40s same thing yeah, they'd go in a into, different a, way. into yep. a radio station and, and they would record it and then the, the DJs yeah. the station owners would start pressing yeah stuff. we'll yeah. give you a fi- they needed money so here's 50 bucks to record and they'd yeah, and, and up through the 50s the same yep. thing every every doo-wop band every doo-wop group has a has a tragic story of yeah some Guy right. in an office making millions, and they're trying to scab, you know, yeah, every, scratch it together on the fair yeah, circuit. Every era, there's been a businessman yeah. have figured a way out to screw. The, so <laughs> screw I guess the, 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 the key they're... is to just get on the other side of the of the business. Yes. <laughs> That's why Ted Leonard started doing sound. <laughs> Speaking of local luminaries, yeah, lo- 
I got to sit down with Teddy again. I had a blast. We sat over at the Hotel St. Michael's, had oh, breakfast. Yeah. I want to say like like my fourth or fifth show, something like that, right when I started. Yeah. And uh, we had a ball, man. Well, you know. Ted, oh, yeah. You, you, I, yeah. You just, I was just with, hanging out with him the other day. With it's Ted, just, you, just, you show up and hold on and go along yeah. for the ride. Yep. It's a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of material yeah, there. Yeah, he's a good <laughs> Yeah, so be- before I forget with you, I, back, way back when, speaking of the genesis of this album, in a way it took 15 years, I, I, those guys, the same guy, Rick Shea, I got to give him props. He's a great musician, great songwriter, and he's my producer and friend. And way back then he says, well, you should let me help you make this yeah. album. And I, I, was, I, was of the, I played with them on stage and opened shows for them. But my own Midwestern working class paranoia. Yeah. I'm like, why do these guys? They don't really know my songs. I was yeah. thought they maybe they just think I'm an okay guy and want to feel sorry for me or something. <laughs> so I wanted to make the, a record. I wanted them to work with me because they thought I deserved it with my songs. And then that CD I made back way back then was accomplished that. The first thing they yeah. why don't you let us? Because I didn't know what I never sang my own songs. I never I never recorded or yeah. engineered, and it showed. But there's a few good things <laughs> on that thing. Uh, but uh, uh, two singles of which I pulled from that I put up on all those sites. Yeah. My duet with Ramblin' Jack Elliott and a, sort of a punk rock little uh, bluesy thing. Anyhow, my life kind of went off the rails there in L.A. I escaped here to Prescott. Go yeah. a little more than eight years now. And Rick, God bless him, stayed with me. I, I never stopped playing my gigs yeah. or writing. And then... Finally, it, it was time, and he, and he was still on board. And I, uh, to, so the whole process, literally, of this album, um, I just had to quit doing everything else I did and lock myself in a room yeah. and figure out how to use a digital recording system, DAW, D A W systems, as they're called. I was, uh, I, you know, I was like a luddite. I didn't learn yeah. how to do that. I didn't learn social media. I didn't learn any of this stuff. So my last year, I'm uh, been catching up. I, I know. Let, let's run through because I tagged you in in something while I was sitting here. Your Instagram is. Uh, I don't Gar- have, I'm not on the Instagram. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I'm gonna. Well, see, I still won't do any. I just no, got I'm my first smartphone the other day, so I'm I don't do anything sh- on the phone. I'm gonna show you what it is. Oh boy, it is uh, uh, just Gar- at Garrick Rawlings on Instagram. You have two posts. They are both Ray Ban ads, which means somebody hacked you. <laughs> well, yeah, I never. You have to use. You can't use the go. Instagram on. Uh, well, yeah, I'm a Ray. That's my side gig, selling shades, <laughs> selling, working over the sunglass hut at the mall. Yeah, it's so, right on the other side of the Orange Julius stand. I, I think, think it's by here. It's by the gun shop, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're in Arizona, baby. But uh, 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 it, so, two, I, what was it? Two, three years ago now, I. I locked myself and figured out, demoed up like 30 songs that I hadn't done proper and started feeding them to Rick. And he, he was overwhelmed. He's like, what are you doing to me, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, without, without getting too much inside baseball, you mentioned the DAW that you're using, the digital audio works, that whatever it's called. What are you using? What, what that, physically are you, are you? I started out on an old Roland all-in-one, yeah. a VS2400 it's called. That's like Which a, a I, console one, yeah, right? It's yeah, not it's like got a motorized recorder. faders. Okay. And that's what I liked about it. Yeah. And then in the middle of it, that broke down, and I had to learn. I'm using Reaper now. Brent, local engineering luminary Brent Reason, hooked me up with a, a thing called Reaper. It's like Pro nice. Tools, but its own. So it's its own it's thing on and, your computer. Yeah, and he lent me a. a uh, uh, an interface so I could do the recording and stuff since yeah. I've, I've got a little more modern. But yeah, and, I, and then Rick, nice. what are you doing to me and with all these songs? I go, I'm really not that prolific. It's just been a while. Yeah, it's, it's, and the, then ca- we, it's the, the catalog. And the I, but I was like, I need you. I would hate to do it, but can you... I'm so deep in, I can't tell if these are even good songs, let alone any good. And we went through and we picked out the songs. And uh, a year ago in March... Not March of this year, but March of last year out in L.A., we yeah. cut the backing tracks at Sean Norris's studios, who the else, band. Who else is on there? Because you've got you on guitar and vocals, obviously. Right. you got some fiddle in there? No fiddle. No? On this one, we got the ba- on all but there's two tracks that are just kind of me, but all the rest are band tracks. And it's, it's Sean Norris on mm-hmm. drums, who used to be in uh, the Icy Hawks in L.A., one of the great yeah. Americana bands out of L.A., and he plays with everybody, one of those top-notch yeah. just guys. And it was his little studio in Highland Park, 
right between L.A. and, uh, and uh, uh, Pasadena, and he was also the recording engineer. Uh, the great bass player Dave Hall, who's in Rick Shea's band, The Losing End, he was on bass and Rick on guitar and yeah. other instruments. And, yeah, the four of us just went in the studio and laid down the backing tracks, and then we built on it I, from I, there. I, other I, instruments, we have yeah. an accordion. Uh, Skip The great Skip Edwards has played okay. with every. Going back to Johnny Rivers, he's played with everybody. He plays accordion on, uh, on a poncho and lefty. And uh, and Rick plays a lot. We got mandolins. Rick plays slide yeah. guitar, steel guitar, electric guitar. Uh, I play acoustic on everything. Six and twelve string mandolin nice. on one, electric on one. Uh, that's it for instruments, well, though. I think. The, the we one, got. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm, I'm losing the title. I'm sorry. Like I said, okay. I was just listening. To oh, it cello. About we cello. got a cello. Yeah. That's cello it. from what's his name of the track? It's it's uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> It is really. It's uh, Lost in Time. Lost in it's Time. Called it's called Lost in the, Time. The, the, the reason that I was confused, the, 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 the hook in there is a cello from Monticello. Monticello. Yeah, yeah. And, in a pawn shop out of, outside yeah. of on a pawn sh- in a pawn shop outside of Montebello, I found an abandoned old cello. Beautiful and, song, uh, and then thanks, there's a little man. treat at the end. Yeah, that when was I in- the song was over, and then some the cello comes. Yeah, it, speaking in. of the demos. Uh, um, a, lo- a great local Prescott girl, Tori, uh, Tori Ackerman. I, when I was doing the demos, I, I didn't know a cello player. And, and, you, and the demo is you're, you're making, uh, yeah. it's dem- short for demonstration for, for the civilians. And hey. you're trying to make it the best you can yourself to, and quote, unquote, sell the song. Yeah. To, do you like it? Here's kind of what I want to do with yeah. it. And I thought I really needed a cello on the... It, you could tell somebody, hey, here's a great song. and It'll sound good if yeah, they're just yeah. like, whatever, buddy. So you kind of <laughs> got to show them, and then they might believe you. And uh, I think it was just the local Prescott uh, uh, Orchestra. I forget the name, the proper official yeah. name of it, but out of Yavapai College, I contacted the conductor, told him what I was up to, and, and he recommended Tori. Oh, nice. And I got a hold of her. And uh, she took a look at the song. In the classical, I'm not a real musician. I'm, a, I'm an artist, as they say. In other words, I don't know how to write charts. or, or all, Although I learned how to play trumpet when I was a kid and could yeah. read music back then. But as a guitar player and writer, it's all by ear. So I, you know, I can give her the chords, and, yeah. and they really want. I go, you, can you just make up your own part? And, so she, and she did, man. And that, that, nice. that ending, that little coda, was uh, a, a song I played in, in the high school, the junior high band back in Sturgis, Michigan. It was a, a Bach piece. I can't remember the number now. Made for written for organ. All these prelude and fugues. He's got a whole bunch of them. But this that melody stuck in my head, yeah. and it's a true story about a a, a girl I knew in in Michigan, Stur- uh, Lori H. Hi, Lori. <laughs> Lori Rice Camp. Now she's up <laughs> around Grand Rapids, Michigan, somewhere. Uh, and she was a cello player who had fine vibrato. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, I just heard that. So I, 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 it would just sound cool to have like the yeah. cello player practicing or what in the end. And Tori came up with that, just killed it. Yeah, it was and beautiful. Then, and uh, the part we did in L.A., uh, oh, good Lord, Shokreen, Amanda... Uh, I can't think of her. Her last name's Shokreen. She's out in L.A., works at, works at uh, Fleas. There's the Silver Lake Music Conservatory, uh-huh. Flea from yeah, Red yeah. Hot Chili Papers. Uh, Chili Papers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, got that. They've been called. W- was one of the founders of that <laughs> yeah. thing. And uh, uh, I'm killing myself because I can't think of her first. Is, anyway, is she, she worked the, there. Is it on the liner notes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's so, all so in So pick there. up the CD uh, yeah, yeah. and read the inside cover. Uh, there you go. Yeah. And, uh... uh and and she and she's from Illinois originally. Our miles dumping grounds. Um, she did a great through there, and she did a good ending of it too. But for some reason, you know, just yeah. a, it was just for some, something about Tori's just. Ble- yeah. I, and so we were able to nice. So I got the, I did a mix. Uh, one cello player throughout the song, and then we saved Tori's uh, coda there. Yeah, which I, I love that too. And that's how I made. I, I love the albums, you know. I know most people listen to things song by song now, and that that's some of the best compliments I've got on the album, that it's it's not a concept album or anything. But, but it flows so nice, yeah, the way it was put together yeah, and the way thanks, they all man. mix in. Uh, one of the things, we talked about the liner notes right there on the thing. That's one of the, I, and again, just my old man yeah, yeah. hair that I don't have anymore is rising up on the back of my neck. There's something about, 
when you used to go get an album or even an eight track or a cassette and they had the little fold outs and you could read the uh, lyrics. Yep. Obviously, yeah, it's all available online. You can all you can yep. Google anything and find it. But there's something about holding it yeah. and looking at the pictures as a photographer, you know, I'm I'm sure. locked into that end of it. I know. And yeah, you can put a million times more stuff on a website than you could on the on the LP or the the the. But CD you don't jacket. study it like you do with I that. Like, yeah. And there's something about there's something about slapping on a pair of headphones, having the music. You can't hear anything else, and holding it in your hand, you're really locked in. I find when I'm doing stuff online because I you know I, mm. I, I I do. You have to. <laughs> I'm watching a YouTube video of of you. I, there's some stuff on uh, from the uh, old Sandy Moss show. I think. I'm doing the her show on Monday. Oh, cool. Actually, first um, time. I, first time. With weren't Sandy. you? Didn't you? Weren't you on there? You were on no, something. There's some I was, video uh, clips. Uh, it was a different. It was a public access show. A, uh, a, a funny little show over at the armor. The, okay. With the, I remember because last time you were on, I shared some of those. I remember. I think uh, I pulled some audio off of it. Oh yeah. For the intro and outro, which I'll do the intro and outro. Mm-hmm. If it's all right with you, I'm going to yank yeah, some which, stuff off the CD, but. You know, when you're doing that, and then you kind of check your phone while it's yeah. playing, and you do the, you're not focused in. The old days of, of studying those liner notes, yeah, reading somebody else, kind of like the forward of a book. You know, sure. a lot of people used to have others write the liner notes and a little intro and stuff. Yeah, you, you win Grammys for that, for yeah. liner notes and There's stuff. There's just something sure. about Cash doing won that won and looking at Susan Johnson's beautiful shots yeah, on, on your Yeah, she did the CD. cover in the back. She uh, has was, photographed pretty much every musician in this part of the state and beyond. Yep, she's got some great work out there. But it's just something about. Yeah, well, she's got a it. lot of passion. Yeah, for, she get you know anybody can snap a good shot, but like you, 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 you especially her, she's a huge music yeah. fan, and she knows how stuff's supposed so to look. She knows how to make it look, look yeah, good. And looking at it as in the context of the music, as opposed yeah. to you know coming in the studio and being a little cold. You know, yeah. and I've had to do that stuff in the past. Uh, I I find it much nicer. I get better images when I sit and I talk with people for a while, get to know them a little bit, get to know their personality. Because you yeah. might get, you know, you, you get a shot of some guy, you know, very intense playing guitar or something or on the keyboards, and if it doesn't match his personality, oh, it's understood. not going to be the same. So, you know, you kind of look for the expressions and things that well, match up with the person. It's a good story that what we what we how we got that cover shot. Yeah. It's it all. I'm, that's just sitting in in her t- kitchen table. Yeah, at her Glancing house. Out the window. If I'm we not had, mistaken. Yes. Yeah. We uh, we had a. I think I went through part of that. The, the indie process of doing all this stuff yourself. Uh, I think I had three or four different photos. A couple with her and a couple with others. Yeah. And there was one shot of hers in the early one. I was thinking I wanted a full body shot of me yeah. on, the, on the for better or worse on the <laughs> cover. And there was the perfect shot where I look, you know, the, yeah. the, the pants didn't look crooked, and the, you know, I didn't have a dumbass look Your on fly my was face, up. and yeah, it was, I didn't look you know, like half a, a dope. And I'm like, but we had lost the light, and it was under yeah. ex- everything except we had lost the, and it was yeah. underexposed. So there's nothing wrong with it, other than it was it really rich enough for a yeah. cover shot. You could do some effects, but I prefer all natural. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so the next time I had a session with her, same location, same thing, same time of day. We, you know how it is. Just like yeah. with music or you cut, when something happens spontaneously, I mean, I, I printed out you the shot. Recreate we must have took yeah. 300 shots just trying to get that same yeah. instant, and we couldn't get it. We needed to take a break. And we were going to wait for the light to change. And we were just, I was, I was sitting at her kitchen table. She was preparing a drink or some, a snack in the kitchen. She picked up her camera, took one shot of me, and put her <laughs> camera down. And that was, that was yeah. it. And, uh, and I think we had another, yeah, then we had a, and then I had to decide. I couldn't keep taking shots. And I'm going through and I'm going through it. And I just wasn't getting what I want. Because you, you yeah. sort of have a preconceived notion. Anyway. Then I see this shot because I didn't want a three quarter shot, but I'm seeing it at a table, yeah. so that makes it yeah. the light. Yeah, and I'm looking out her window, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, that's that'll it. work. That that's nice. fine." And then the back cover was a shot that didn't match anything before, but it was from a previous shoot. Yeah. It, anyway, so it all, yeah, it all it, it all nice. worked out, man. Yeah, the, the your your track one on the on the new. I want to run away. Yeah. Now we talk about we talked earlier about how you kind of. 
hear something and make up the story. Wait, give me the genesis. Give me some of the lyrics and the genesis behind that song. Uh, the first line, I wrap myself in the blanket of your memory. I wear it around like a coat from the cold. And, I've got a, and I'm, I do a little motif on a, on rapping. Later on, it's uh, I write myself did, on the magic of your beauty. And, how did that come about? And then I'll tell you the story that was running through my brain oh, cool. as I was driving down 89 coming out here this morning. Cool. Uh, um, <laughs> well, I have a, It's I, not what you thought. That's all right. I love these stories. I can't wait. So briefly, I, uh, um, the love of my life, a uh, girl out there in, in, uh, in L.A., um, Worst heartbreak of my life. So I had a. That, that was the original idea. I could do a whole song cycle yeah. on that, but most of the songs are pretty brutal. <laughs> They're not. You know, maybe I, I go. It shouldn't be my first proper uh, professionally produced CD. Is the biggest downer of everybody's <laughs> life. Not that they were good songs, but and one of my friends said after a while, she goes, "Why don't you? Do you ever write about anything happy?" And, and, and I'm like, "No." When I'm happy, who wants to sit around and write songs? And uh, <laughs> there's good stuff going on, but it did stick because there was a lot of good, yeah, uh, in, 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 in a lot of good inspiration there too. And I think it was. I think that was the first time I wrote. It's a hindsight song, but yeah. putting a positive spin on it because there was so much good there. So it came from that. Nice. It was looking. Trying to take everything good out of it and remembering that. All right, you know how like like you watching a movie, especially something very dark like a you know Coen Brothers or something, mm. and there will be something horrific going on, but the music is the what's the term for ironic. that? Where it's kind of the opposite. Yeah, ironic. Where it's like happy and yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Say some of the lyrics again. Uh, uh, <laughs> the photographs do no justice to your memory. For I can't feel your breath upon my lips. What was about wearing I wrap your... my mind oh so carefully around the taste of your sweet kiss. Oh, you want to go back to the clothes one? <laughs> the blanket? First one's, I wrap, my, I wrap myself in the blanket of your memory. <coughs> I'm picturing you're out on an, uh, with I'm a, thinking... On an Indian reservation no, with a no, Navajo road. No, worse. Uh, <laughs> in Silence of the Lambs. What are you oh my making God. me the <laughs> human outfit? Oh, that's... I'm like, this is a great... This would be a great background song going I'm, over as the serial killer's chopping... A soundtrack <laughs> to the macabre. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going... And I know it's not, but in my head I'm picturing this guy with a hacksaw and a tarp in the basement and... <laughs> well, now, Matt... <laughs> That it, as I'm learning, I want to do. I want to guest host the next po- Mile High <laughs> podcast and interview you and get, try to get into that mind. As, a, as nowhere anybody wants to be, trust me, myself included. It's like Neil Young says: "Those shrinkers have been head shrinkers have been trying to get to me for years. It's like not, oh, not going there." We're, okay, so you got. We're sitting. Um, probably should have done. I'll do this in the intro, but we're sitting in the uh, actually on the stage right. at the beautiful Raven. I I should have brought my guitar. I yeah. could have just hung out here for a couple weeks until I had to play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could run that that much of a bar tab. Uh, we'll just leave it open until your so, show. So we're sitting here, Raven Cafe, on the stage. You'll be performing at in about two weeks. I'm yeah, going to put thir- this up tonight or tomorrow. August the 23rd, uh, Thursday. Now, is that 8 o'clock of, to... Uh, kind of a release eight, party eight for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice. It is already out there, but I haven't done an official. I was so, so wrapped up in that process. I so stop on in, pick yeah, up a copy do. if you haven't already. Yep. Uh, I would really suggest getting it ahead of time. Uh, and you're going to be on some yeah, local gonna, morning TV next uh, week. I'm doing uh, Sandy Moss's Arizona. And that gets ran in That's, Phoenix also. So oh, cool. So well, when I better be good. Anybody listening to this. Plan on coming up Thursday nights at the Raven. It's a lot of fun up yeah, here. It's, it's a the great, one great it's, hang. It's the one venue in town that that, that likes original artists and and, and we're getting and more good bands. We're getting more and more, and that's good to see. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's big. And then big the plus. following Thursday, I'm up at Jerome at the Spirit oh, Room. Nice. I can't remember that, like the thirty. Or something end of the month that last week and well, the thirty well, first I'm out in uh, in your neighborhood at the Big Daddy's oh, you know Big on Daddy's Friday the, the not tiny, this Friday yeah, the tiny mighty I love that My place God, he, what a great job he does on that one barbecue. of the one of the reasons why I originally wanted to start this podcast you know three four years ago was to really focus in on local talent local musicians comics there's a lot writers, of talent authors, here yeah. and just interesting folks we were joking around earlier he's 
I think he's gone now. But Ooh, Mark- Kaylina behind the counter for who's back there? Kayleen. Uh, who does she play with? She's her own artist. She's got with an album. Dan she, Seaman? She, is that no? Is she's, that the same one or no? No, no. She's right there, the short hair and the glasses. Okay. Kayleen or Kaylina? Who who plays with Dan a lot? I don't know if I know Dan. I, Dan Seaman. Used to be on public radio out here. I can't think. Musician. I'm sure I'd know him if I saw him. He might. Is he the one that does all the weird sound effects yeah, and stuff? Yeah. yeah, she did uh, a What's while. Last name? Mar- Martin? Martin, that's okay, it. Yeah, they, they, they do projects together. They do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I have him. seen. Yeah, yeah, now I know yeah. what you're talking about. I, I haven't seen him in a long time. Too, though. He does some interesting stuff. He was stuff. doing a story. Uh, uh, well, it was kind of a poetry poetry kind of thing, which isn't my deal, but it was like a spoken word thing over at the uh, Peregrine Book mm-hmm. Company for a while. It was doing right. it like monthly for a couple of years, I think. And uh, Les and I went in and checked it out uh, a couple of times. Can't but, believe he's not here yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost over, You probably Les. can't find parking. <laughs> uh, but there's... Uh, it's probably out of Big a, Daddy. He's he, getting he, a prime oh, rib. Wait, what time is it? It's Friday? Yeah, Friday at noon. Mm. He's out there already. He's out there eating. <laughs> he likes it. He goes and he kind of kind of helps produce that show. Sky yeah, yeah, Conwell yeah. books it. Les kind of makes yeah, sure that the sound is everything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that's just his excuse to go by and get the of free lunch. Of course it is. Yeah. I don't blame him. I, I do don't the same either. Thing. Yeah, I'm not a big barbecue guy. Uh, I figure I can usually do better on my own. Yeah. But uh, oh, Eric does uh, Eric, a great he's a, job. He's a real there. Colorado cowboy. Man. Yeah, he's, he's a everything fun guy. in there. Is, I'm not even a prime rig, rib guy. It makes me think of the Vegas cheap prime rig uh, yeah. specials. But they, you got the last time I played out there a couple months ago, and uh, I said, okay, I get, it was the best prime rib I'd ever had in my life. Uh, oh, three, four weeks ago, maybe a little longer, I was out there on a Friday night, and I recorded a show. I don't, I don't even remember the what we were doing out there, but I recorded something that day and then hung out for the music. Yeah. And... Uh, I go in and I order a, a, a little plug for our official, unofficial sponsor, Big Daddy E's Barbecue, BDEBBQ.com. Um, I ordered their Big Daddy. It's a sandwich that has a little bit of pulled meat. It's got a, a sausage, and it's got something, I think, some tri-tip in there. It's like a combo of a little bit of everything. I always get that because it's got a good taste of mm-hmm. everything. I jokingly said, oh, it's prime rib. Why don't you throw some prime rib on there? And he laughed. I just, I just joked. So he, I, I go out and sit in the patio, and then... Uh, they bring out the sandwich, and it almost took two people to hold. <laughs> it was yeah, I got the it, small prime rib. It was took me two piled days to eat. up with what they usually do. Had a couple of ribs thrown on it, and then like two slabs of prime rib. Good grief! And I looked like what? What? Is, and, he, and then he stuck his head out. He goes, "Well, you said throw some." <laughs> Even his mac and cheese is amazingly oh, that, good, and that's my side. I get the mac and cheese. Oh my god! So I uh, I ate it till I couldn't eat anymore. Packed it up, took it home, had it for lunch the next day, and finished it for dinner Saturday yeah. night. It was incredible. Yeah, I like to go early for the gig and just get a little pulled pork sandwich yeah. on the side like I'm not really eating, <laughs> and then get a full meal when I'm done. <laughs> kind of spreads it. Not <laughs> now, you're going to have an interesting backdrop when you play here, because we are surrounded by naked women right now, and I, up on the walls anyway. I don't know which way to face the stool when I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, before I forget... Uh, this Sunday, out at the Highland Center, um, oh, part of uh, Tom Agostino's folk sessions, folk sessions. Uh, Woody Guthrie, a uh, Columbia right. River Song celebration. What's the uh, what are they calling that? I forget it. Uh, uh, I think it's Woody Columbia Woody River. In the woods Woody in the yeah, like, something like yeah. Something Woody like in the that. woods. That yeah. makes which what a beautiful venue that. That's to be clear, we're you. talking about Woody Guthrie. Yeah, <laughs> not the naked <laughs> women on the wall, or the naked guy across the on the other side. Well, I don't know. I'm look. I don't know why you're looking that way, man. I, I, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> man, I just entered into a very high judgment area here. I didn't expect from from Garrick the, the painting above your head is more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Here for those in the distant <laughs> lands, here at the Rape, it's a great venue. It's a restaurant and wine and in you know in uh, and craft huge beers. Supporter of the local Art. arts, and yeah, so they the artwork on the walls is always changing. They yeah. they rep you know different uh, painters and photographers. Now the last time I saw you was you were running sound for Tom at the uh, oh. at, at the Highland Center. Yes, I, I had recorded my, myself and Darren Mahoney sat. In this exact spot, almost, we're at the next table over in and sat and did a podcast with Karen Dizel, yep. who was on the bill that right, night. Right, right. Uh, 
And what a neat venue that is. I haven't been up there for music. I've I had never up, been there before either. Well, I've been up there for other things because that's a, uh, uh, a big destination for local schools. So right. in my work with local media and local paper, I've been out there to cover some of their daytime. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> there's some, oh, there's. Oh, he's got. He's chewing. I, I bottomed out. I've got crunchy no, coffee. I, here. I like chewable coffee. Yeah, it's, uh, Cowboy but I've, coffee. Been, I've been out there several times for their school events, and they use that same amphitheater for presentations sure. of of uh, of uh, different animals and reptiles. Yeah, that's li- their main live thing. And dead. Yeah. They also have some uh, not artifacts. What am I talking? The archae- the fossils. They'll have big displays out there, and the kids go. They take them on tours through yeah, the whole. They got little nature walk trails. And I've always known they've done shows up there. And Tom's been doing shows up there for quite a while. Tom Augustino of the Folk Sessions. Um, but I haven't been up there for any of the nighttime activities or any of the music stuff. And uh, if you're not familiar with Arizona weather, we're kind of at the tail end, middle to the tail end of our uh, monsoon season. Heavy summer rains. Light shows in the sky, thunder, lightning, and stuff, and it's just beautiful time of year. Not always conducive for outdoor music no. during that time, but with that overhang in that amphitheater where you were, you were, were you there it, when it rained? Yeah, well, yeah, I got, it, was, it I, made the night better. I see, thought. I got there halfway through Karen's set because I needed some shots of Karen for the podcast page, right. and uh, and reached out to Tom. He said, "Yeah, just come on by," and and, and she gets off stage. The next artist comes up, and in the middle of his yeah. set. It just starts rolling in, and it was so beautiful. Him playing, the br- cool breeze coming through on yeah. a very warm night, and the lightning and thunder show just over our head. It was gorgeous. Yeah, I loved it. What I a need! Now, how'd you hook up with Tom? Uh, it was probably via Ram- I'd saw uh, via Ramblin' Jack Elliott. Yeah, uh, he did a show here, and he's coming back this really? November, I believe, or December after. I pretty ninety nine percent sure. Is he doing it with uh, with, with Tom? With Tom okay, I believe. Nice. I think right after thank. It's not official yet, so maybe I shouldn't have leaked it. But uh, yeah. well, no, uh, that's just a good uh, reason to follow uh, Tom uh, yeah. and the folk sessions uh, on Facebook and through the web to yeah. know of the th- anything that's coming up. Yeah, I think after after uh, Thanksgiving. Anyhow, Jack was in town maybe four or five years ago, something yeah. like that. And uh, I just saw the. I didn't know Tom. And I just reached out and says, "Hey, I because I yeah. worked with Ramblin' Jack. I've sang with Ramblin' Jack. R- road managed him, and uh, and Gail Steiger was involved. Gail's a big friend. They're friends with Jack as well. Yeah. And I knew I met Gail out in Texas when I was on the road with Jack. Anyhow, that's another story. But that's how we got Tom invited me yeah. to the show, and we got to know each other. Then he started booking me for little things and." No, I'm helping him out doing sound and he, playing he does, whatever. He and does those shows out there at the Highland Center. I was amazed and also at what does, a great little uh, at venue this that is. Prescott Center for the Arts, right around the corner. Yeah, of the it's old an church. old church they converted. Now a theater and yeah. man, and also it, does shows at the Elks for yeah for large for the bigger artists. ones. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, that that Highland Center though, what a treat that place. I is. could and I, I, eight years I lived here and I never never yeah. been to it. It's out by Lynx Lake. Yeah, if you're yeah, out here. Walker, but it's a. Uh, yeah, it's just an outdoor venue, completely covered up, but uh, just a perfect little. Uh, what if maybe, maybe 150 people, well, if that, then, and then something like that. Standing and and yeah. spots for some folding chairs and stuff. Obviously, everybody was trying yeah. to get under the overhang, over under the the tin roof for right. the for the rain. Yeah, but and the Woody Fest Sunday afternoon. I think it starts at one or something. But they're using there's acts on the main stage, and I think there's a little, oh, little ramada auxiliary. or something. Oh, neat. And there's going to be an auxiliary stage there, so there's. The artists will be tag cool. teaming back and forth, so people can just nice wander around and do whatever. And what a beautiful, there. just a beautiful setting, fresh air out there, a, a real gem of yeah. the Prescott area. And you don't get you, asked yeah. too often to come out and play Woody Guthrie songs. Yeah. I do. I do it when nobody asks. So, <laughs> so um, well, well, let's, looking forward to that again. We want to thank the good folks at the Raven for letting us take up space. For sure. Thank you, Garrick, for sitting down. Thanks, Tell everybody Matt. again where where folks can find you, your website, Facebook. Yeah, GarrickRawlings.com. Everything comes on. I'm on Facebook. Look me okay. up on there. Cool. But in, uh, and I'm on all those fancy internet download streaming nice. sites. And uh, and the intro and outro. I don't know what I'm going to use, but it's off. It, they will be separate tracks off of your self titled new release, Garrick Rawlings, that you can get anywhere you get music, but. 
the best way is come see you live, pick up a copy from uh, from you after the show. And, and one last shout out from the album, the great Jamie Lynn Shuey. Uh, sang harmony and backgrounds on a, on a handful of the songs. Yeah. And she's a great artist in her own right out there in L.A., just took everything up a notch. And the other female voice you'll hear is Perla Bataya, who sings on my song No Tengo Palabras, which is half English, half Spanish. I, that was And neat. she sang. Now, were you doing that phonetically, or are you fluent? I'm not fluent, but I speak, yeah. I speak a little. That it's song's about the song. same girl that the first song's about. It was a beautiful <laughs> was a, song. A Mexican girl. And thank you. And she... she uh, that was a miracle. I just cold call reached out to her because yeah. we couldn't find a native tongue Spanish speaking singer to, that could sing harmony. And she sang, I knew her from, uh, from she sang back up and toured with Leonard Cohn and co wrote with him. So yeah. it was a total shot in the dark. Teller. Yeah. <laughs> and she just liked the song and said she'd come out and work with us. And she just, she did, I just, if she showed up and sang a part and left, I would have been happy. Yeah. But she did three different parts, and then she said she wanted to double it. She just orchestrated her own thing right in front of our very eyes with her daughter hanging out with us in the studio. Nice, so, nice. Uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't have done it without those folks. All right, well, pick up a copy. And again, like I said, one of the main reasons I started this to begin with was to get a chance to sit down and talk with and hang out with local artists, visual Written word, and of course the musicians that I've uh, that I've gotten a chance to, including Mr. Garrick Rawlings, go out support some uh, some uh, live music, some local artists, and you too will be fascinated by the level of talent that's right here in our part of the state in Prescott, Amen. Arizona, and and the surrounding areas. Thanks, Garrett. Thanks and for the Matt's rabbit. one of them right here. Ah, you should check out his comedy work as well as the oh, no. spoken word. <laughs> and, uh, it's after one now. Can we get that tequila? <laughs> well, that was it. That was 184. You can see uh, or listen to all of our back episodes at milehighshow.com. Use that support the show link, that, uh, that tab, and uh, find links to wherever you can find the show. Give us a rating and a review. We would appreciate it. Use the Contact Us page to send us suggestions on future guests or, or show recording locations. That would work out. And also links to all of our guests' social media and websites, including this week's Garrick Rawlings. Pick up a copy of his CD. Check him out in Chino Valley, Arizona, August 31st at Big Daddy E's. And on the... 23rd at the Raven Cafe, the 30th at the Spirit Room, all of those right here in Yavapai County. GarrickRawlings.com is where you can find out that information. And don't forget two things. Use that Amazon link at MileHighShow.com uh, to support the show so that we can support these artists. And, and uh, the second thing, we'll end it on this. Mark's Beer Garden, find them on Facebook. Vince Dalkey, Phoenix Comic, will be hosting a comedy show preceded by an open mic on both or all three, August 17th, 24th, and 31st. So let's uh, see if we can't uh, encourage the Prescott comedy scene. And like I said, you never know who might be there taking the mic. The 17th, the 24th, and the 31st. Mark's Beer Garden starting about 6 o'clock, so hopefully we'll see you there. When you miss the sign, lost in time. Lost in time On a lonely, warm spring day California, the month of May I got down on my knees and I prayed That someday I'd hear her play This old abandoned old cello From a pawn shop outside of Montebello There's no case, the old bow is busted Only two strings, they're both well rusted It lost, lost in time What we lose, what did we find Moments gone, in seconds flat You can look, but you can't go back Feels like 
a crime When you miss the sign Lost in the time Lost in the time Thank you.